G'day and welcome back. It's going to be a glorious spring day in Melbourne today and what a better way to spend it than out on the bike testing and comparing some wheel sets. So now let's quickly go through the tests we'll be running on these wheels today. Firstly, we'll head out to the Hawthorne Cycling Club and run a uh, closed uh, track test on their, on their circuit there and evaluate the uh, flat performance of, of, of both wheel sets. After that, we'll uh, head out to Melbourne's amazing Dandenong Ranges and we'll put these wheels to the test on some climbing. And for that, what better test than the iconic 1 in 20 climb in Melbourne. Then uh, finally, we'll um, head back here to MCS headquarters, we'll crunch the numbers and, uh, and, and I'll give my final, uh, final subjective uh, review on how I feel that these wheels have performed for me over the last few years. Representing Team Carbon today, we have a set of Yolio C60 Pros. The build on these includes uh, DT Swiss 350 hubs and Sapim CX Ray spokes with 2024 lacing. In the aluminium corner of the ring, we have the ever popular and widely available Fulcrum Racing Zeros. I have been running those wheels for about a year now and they've also been uh, really, really good. Before we hit the road, I've put both wheels on the scales. I've weighed them complete with tubes, tyres and an Altegra 1128 cassette. The Yolio uh, C60s, they weigh in at uh, 2,820 grams. And the Fulcrum Racing Zeros, they come in at 2,490 grams. So it looks like the aluminium wheels are off to a cracking start uh, with a bit of a, with a 400 odd gram saving, saving there. So that's what's in store for today. Enough talk, let's uh, hit the road and let the testing begin. So we're out here at the uh, Hawthorne Cycling Club Velodrome and uh, we'll be running our first wheel set test here today. So the first test will be a test of the wheels uh, flat uh, sort of time trialing abilities. So for that test, I'll be uh, running around the track uh, for 10 minutes, trying to hold a consistent 250 watts, and we'll see which wheel set holds the fastest average speed. Strapped onto my TCR at the moment the, are the Yolio C60s. So first up, we'll hit the track with the Yolio C60 carbon wheel set. So that's the 10 minute test on the Yolio C60s done. I averaged a bit more, I averaged about 255 watts. So now I'll just do a quick wheel and brake pad change and we'll head back out there on the fulcrums. So that wraps up the uh, flat track uh, wheel set comparison. Test one is now done. I managed to keep them both, both uh, 10 minute uh, segments to uh, about 255 watts for both the Yolio C60s and the Fulcrum Zeros. So we've got some really good data we can have a look at when we get back home. Now we'll uh, get everything packed up in the car and we'll scoot over to the Dandenong Ranges and uh, see what these wheels can do up the 1 in 20. So we're out in the uh, Dandenong Ranges now for our second uh, wheel test and uh, for that we will be test putting these wheels to the test up uh, Melbourne's uh, famous 1 in 20 Strava segment. 
Uh, so the one in 20 segment, it is a six kilometer climb with an average gradient of about 4%. For that test, I'll be um, trying to run both wheels at a consistent wattage of about 250 watts, and we'll see which wheel set is faster on the climbs. Now at the moment, I've got the uh, fulcrum zeros on the TCR, so I'll be heading up the one in 20 with the fulcrums first. Okay, that's the first run up the 1 in 20 finished on the uh, Fulcrum Zeros. Slight uh, deviation from the original plan. Before heading up the climb, I uh, had one of the uh, MCS uh, high power energy bars and, mate, I couldn't hold, I couldn't keep it to 255. Um, I averaged 278 watts up there. So, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Now, I'm just going to have to repeat it on the uh, Yolio C60s. So, we'll just roll down. Quick wheel change and brake pad change. I'm getting good at these now. And uh, we'll see what the C60s can do up the one in 20. Uh, and we'll average 278 watts uh, again as well, if I can. Just look at them. The bike looks fast just standing, standing still. But that's not what we're testing here today. We're testing how these things can go up that hill. So we'll hit the one in 20 again now. We're back at the top here at Sassafras in at the uh, Village Green. So I guess that must make me the uh, village idiot, I guess. I uh, did the second climb there in the uh, Yolio C60s. Managed to average a um, very similar power, maybe a little bit more, but I was struggling if I'm honest. I think I found the limits of those uh, energy bars. So we've got all the data now from our uh, wheel set testing. We've finished off the um, collecting all the data. Now we'll uh, head back down head back home to the uh, MCS uh, headquarters. We'll crunch the numbers and uh, we'll, I'll uh, get back to you with the uh, findings. Okay, I've uh, crunched the numbers, so let's get stuck into the results. I've even got a clipboard, that's how serious this is. Okay, so for the first test out on the Velodrome, the uh, 10 minute uh, flat test, the uh, Yolio C60s, the average power was uh, 256 watts. The uh, average speed was 37.4 kilometers an hour and the distance covered was 6.24 uh, kilometers. For the Fulcrum Racing Zeros, the average power was also 256 watts, so spot on there. The average speed was 37.6 kilometers an hour. The total distance covered was 6.27 uh, kilometers. On to the results for the second test, the uh, climbing test out on the 1 in 20 Strava segment. The uh, Yolio C60s had an average power of 281 watts with a segment time of 17 minutes and 43 seconds with an average speed of 22.7 kilometers an hour. The uh, Fulcrum Racing Zeros the average power was a bit less, it was 275 watts. The segment time was 18 minutes and 9 seconds. And the average speed was 22.1 kilometers an hour. So there you have it, across both tests, um, really the results show there really is not that much uh, in it when comparing these uh, two different wheels, whether it's uh, on the flat or, or whether it's their climbing abilities. Now let's move on to a few of the other points that's probably worth noting. If we look beyond the data, beyond the tests, uh, just look at some of my own experiences and thoughts of uh, these different wheel sets. The, uh, the C60s, they're a bit of a handful, especially uh, in windy conditions, and uh, they do adversely uh, affect the handling of the bike. 
Now, the C60s, they're not a great choice if you're after an all-rounder. Uh, in that case, you're probably better off looking at either a wheel in a 40 or 50 millimeter um, depth, or perhaps a combination of the two. The braking wise, braking on the carbon C60s is actually not that bad. Um, you adjust pretty quickly. Sure, the uh, aluminium wheels, uh, the braking is a little bit better, but uh, you adjust pretty quickly to the carbon, and in my opinion, it's really not, not, a, not a show showstopper. But I think we probably all have to admit, the C60s do look pretty awesome. Uh, us, us cyclists can be a bit of a vain lot, I guess, and uh, if I'm honest, that's probably uh, part of the reason why, why I bought those wheels. Cost-wise, well, the Olio C60s are a uh, you know a good quality Chinese uh, carbon clincher. Um, they retail for about uh, 932 US dollars or 1,350 dollars. So not a, they're not an expensive uh, proposition, the Yolios. But if you're looking at something like a Zip or an Envy, you know those wheels will cost you two, maybe three times as much. And uh, you know, from what we've seen on the performance results today, you, you might you might be a bit disappointed. Similarly, if we look at the Fulcrum Racing Zeros, they retail for about 680 US dollars or 1,000 Aussie dollars. Now they're not a budget or budget uh, aluminium wheel by any stretch of the imagination. There are a lot uh, a lot cheaper options out there. Also, it's probably less risky buying an aluminium wheel on the second-hand market versus a second-hand carbon wheel. So there you have it. Uh, that's my, that's uh, my experience on, on both these wheels. For me, if you're looking for a good all-round wheel, I would stick with the aluminium wheels. A good quality aluminium wheel uh, will, uh, will serve you well. I understand the wheel set is always a popular upgrade. Now, if you are looking to upgrade from the basic wheels that came with your bike, you will probably uh, see some benefits uh, from uh, stepping up to a better quality wheel. If you're thinking of moving up to a really high-end wheel and spending a lot of money on a set of wheels, in all honesty, I think you'll get better value and better, um, better return on your investment uh, by buying a power meter instead. That would be my recommendation. That pretty much covers it for today. It's been a lot of fun testing these wheels. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Don't forget, hit the thumbs up button if you've liked the video. And uh, I'd really appreciate it if you'd subscribe as well. And uh, until next time, see you later. Whoa!